Spear shall be shaken, shield shall be splintered, a sword day, a red day, ere the sun rises. Today we're gonna defend West Mnet with Eomea and 35 Ruhirim for 20 more command points and 10% more resources. Let's get it started. West Mnet, the greatest region of Rohan, where lie the largest cities and fortifications of the Riddermark. Should these cities fall, their people will become refugees. Oh yeah, you heard Gandalf guess. Destroy all Isengard forces. Men of Rohan. Destroy all Fight Isengard forward. forces. See, no Go more. Here. I got you. Riders of the Mark. Ah. Riders of the Mark. Rohan must stand. So let's group the Rohirrim in this battalion with Eomea in number one and the Rohirrim archers in number two. Let's build some farms inside the base to get some more money. And we can also build a postan gate and close, for, close the gate just for the worst case scenario. West Mnet is also a 1v1 map and freezing rain has been used from our opening which means we have lost every single leadership we get. Oh, look at them. Men of the Riddermark. Mark. Let's trample them down. Let's kill this settlement. This, you know, this, oh, they don't even die. They have heavy armor too. They took no damage from this trample. I mean, we have no leadership, but our Rohirrim are also fully upgraded. It's kind of questionable. So hold on a second. Let's kill this first, and then we need to kill the pikemen as soon as we possibly can with our Rohirrim archers. Let's also use the wedge formation to deal more damage. Let's peel back. Our pikemen are not dealing. Uh, our Rohirrim archers are not dealing that much damage. They are following us. Let's use fire to kill them a bit faster. Hopefully it's gonna be enough to burst them down. Yes, it is definitely more than enough to burst them down. Eomi is all about to hit level 4. Once again, once he's reaching level 5, uh, Thurs of the Gulfine will increase his damage by 50% and his armor by 50% as well, which is pretty nice. And that's gonna make Eomi a 1v1 fighting machine of the Riddler Mark. Let's trample them down. Let's hunt some Uruks. Let's give them his wedge formation. This battalion can't get... Oh, he also can get the wedge formation. That's pretty nice. We have some command points available if you want to get... We could get some more units, but I believe that's gonna be a waste of time because in this video I'm gonna try to do two campaigns, it's one, two missions at once in the campaign. Right now. Right. Alright, uh, we just did a bonus. Okay, purchase heavy armor for three battalions. You know, already done this last video. And to rank up Eomea on one level, no problemo. It's the enemy. Hey, look at the stun landings. Say no more. Plus Y for each kill. I take it. I take it. More of them. Let's trample them down. Actually, they are dealing decent amount of damage to the work layer. I was expecting a bit less, to be honest. I mean, it's not the best, but it's also not really bad. So you can still creep with this Rohirrim archers. Uh, but it feels like they have no fire arrows, you know? They have no upgrade on the arrows, I mean. With fire arrows, in normal BFME 1, they can actually per uh, burn this in a second and a half, you know? Let's grab the settlement. We will lose this farm, but that's fine. Closing the gate was very important because, you know, one time, many, many years ago when I was playing the campaign, I forgot to close the gate and I was just like tunnel vision focus on one thing and ju I just got the message I'm defeated because the one Urukai which was able to get inside the jeans was able to finish us off. We also lost a lot of these units. So let's go inside the jeans now. Let's use this and then just try to burst down the Tita. Let's kill as many buildings as we possibly can. Actually, wait, now, now it should be bursting down. Yeah, there we go. Rohirrim, kill the pikemen. Rohirrim, oh, careful, Rohirrim archers. Strike them down. Let's use spear throw. We can't use the claw break, but it's fine. We just need to kill the pikemen and then we are Gucci, you know? Oh, oh, okay. That's the message I was talking about. You get a message randomly, you, you, you lost something. Cloud break has been used. We, you know what we need to do? We need to kill the Uruk pit. This way he can't bring up any more uh, pikemen. Okay, just we killed all the pikemen, that's great. Uh, unfortunately, we lost the Sitter, but it's also fine. 
Kill this and we need to get out. We need to kill this pikeman too. The second we can. Just to make sure that they are not able to kill our horses. Because once again, they are one of the best counter units against calf unit. The best counter unit from Isengard, definitely. Alright, let's peel back. Let's heal up a bit. We also lost a couple of units, but it's kind of fine. We can now demolish one of the buildings inside our castle to build the armory. This way we can bring up, uh, bring up some new units. Look how damaged this unit is. It is an outpost. I mean, of course I'm very experienced in Battle for Middle Earth games. I know all the 1v1 maps and also 2v2 maps which are existing in the game. So West Mnet is definitely a map I was playing a lot when I was playing this game actively many, many years ago. Let's build a statue for the leadership part because this is giving you 100% more damage and 100% more combat experience. And also it gives you the hero bonus which is, you know, making our heroes cheaper. Not only when it comes to recruit them but also when it comes to revive them if you lose them. But you need to have at least 2 or more up to 4 which will give you 30% discount. The well is giving you also some bonuses and that's going to reduce the cost of our infantry units which are for example the yeoman archers from the archer range, the alvin warriors or the peasants from the farms. So we gotta be a bit patient, heal up over time. And armory should be up by now, there we go. We have enough money to purchase all the upgrades at once, which is good. We have only one single settlement outside. We didn't even purchase this one behind our base, which is a mistake. But we have almost full base with farms beside one single uh, slot. Which means we should be fine, you know. We are also healing up over time. And, you know, when it comes to build the army Vorfi of Rohan, you need to make sure that your units are highly level, that you are always full on command points with units, because you need to keep in mind that this very army you are able to see right now is going to be the army which will arrive in Helm's Deep to save King Theoden, okay? Alongside with Gandalf, of course. So that means keeping those units alive for each mission to be able to increase their levels with that also their uh, strength and power is crucial if you want to have an easy time defending Helm's Deep and also later on defending Minas Tirith. Okay, so let's go for the attack. He was also rebuying, uh, rebuilding the fortress, which is something I like to see. Because once again, we are playing the hard campaign. That's not the easy one. And easy, if you kill the buildings once, they will never replace that. I believe it's the same situation also in medium. Burst it down with fires, arrow. Last man standing, okay. He has no more uh, pikemen, so I'm not worried about the situation, not even a little bit. He can go for a juicy trample. He has double Uruk Pit, one of, uh, they are both actually level 2. He has to re recruit whatsoever some pikemen very, very soon. Let's use heal. When it comes to build armies, you know, you will of course get the chance to play first of all with Rohan until Helm's Deep. And then after Helm's Deep is defended, you will also get the chance to play with the Gondo army, the Faramir. And I like to split the army, you know. Rohan is known as the Riddermark faction for the powerful horses. Rohirrim archers, Rohirrim, and even now the elite unit, the royal vanguards, you know. So we're gonna keep the uh, Rohan army with uh, horses exclusively. And the second um, we get to play the Gondor faction in the campaign, we will build Gondor with archers exclusively. Because if you don't know the... See it. If you don't know, the rangers from the Gondor faction are my favorite archers in the game. We also lost a double well here, unfortunately, I was not paying attention once again. He has no pikemen, so we can just go for a trample. But you can see the trample damage isn't that great anymore. Eomi is level 4, might get even level 5 very, very soon. And once again, once you get all the upgrades from your armory, from your armory, just demolish the armory the second you can to build something else what you might need because you won't need the armory anymore okay we are taking so much damage actually from these units and the nerf is hitting like a truck to be honest guys they nerfed um the trample damage against units so your trample isn't dealing as much damage anymore in this mod in compared to battle for middle earth one normally in bfme one if you have full upgraded rohirrim and they trample the urukai the urukai will not you know most of the time instantly die as long as eomi is nearby and gives you crazy amount of damage leadership 50 percent which is pretty nice in the uh, you know and once again in battle for middle earth one leadership is able to stack with each other which means you can get also theory leadership to the nearby allied units 
as well as the bitch formation from the horses itself can also be stacked with the leadership you get. So long story short, you can get your Rohirrim hit like an absolute track. Trust me on that one. Okay, let's kill this settlement. We will get also some units on the field from the archer range to get it to level 2. And let's keep moving. I don't know if he actually was able to purchase this outpost at the, bot at the top left side of the map. Not sure. Bro, hit him. I need to sacrifice those archers though. Maybe I will just keep them. I don't know. So we have some archers in the worst case scenario. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep them alive. I guess. And wait until the elven... Uh, let me check something. When they are level 2... I mean, they have nothing. They have no ability, as you can see and tell, right? So unlike Rohirrim, they get uh, the for death and glory charge. Which is gonna make them a bit stronger. They are level 2... Uh, they are not true. Level 3 now. <laughs> okay. Skirmish. I wanna see the damage output against buildings. Let's see. Oh, pretty good, actually. And also elven fletching. This guy has unlimited resources. He's recruiting units all the time. Let's give them also everything that they need. Fight. If you are getting attacked like that, always switch to the normal formation. Because the normal formation is gonna make you 50% tankier. In a situation like this, always like this, always switch. We need to help them. We need to help them. We need to make them survive this. Uh, because as you guys know, as I mentioned many many times on this channel, Urukai are the strongest units in the game. Uh, the, the fastest and the strongest swordsman in the game. For death and glory, Eomia. Beautiful trample. Okay, let's keep moving on to the well. Actually, we can fight this, no problem. Let's fight this. Once again, no pikemen, no problem. Let's use heal. Enough time wasted. Let's go for a victory, let's go for a W, guys. Let's go for death and glory, just like in the films we are using Clawbreak, and I'm actually surprised that Clawbreak is only for 3 power points, because it's a busted ability. Even though I'm personally thinking that Darkness and also Freezing Rain from Isengard are just a bit stronger than the Clawbreak from the Gondor or Rohan faction, especially in the mid to late game. But Clawbreak, uh, you know what would be a great add-on to Clawbreak? And it's a, it's a thing, by the way, it's already existing in BFME to the Rise of the Witch King. The second you use Clawbreak against Mordor, the trolls are turning into stones. Which could be a, a great addition, you know? To what Clawbreak would uh, be a bit better, a bit more useful. Alright, let's fight this, no problemo. You guys keep fighting. This is on cooldown. Now we need to peel back. Attacking buildings with the Rohirrim Arches when the fire row is on cooldown is kind of pointless, guys. Okay, he has one pikeman. But that should be fine. Let's demolish this. More pikemen are coming, we need to peel back. Alright, so let's peel back. Let's peel back. Don't, 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 don't trample, don't trample, don't trample, don't trample. Okay, we were able to defend ourselves. Let's build the stable once again. Stable, the shortcut is S. We killed every single building beside the Citadel, which is repairing now. But it's fine. Because remember what I was saying, you need to make sure that you are full on command point. It's very, very important. That you don't have any space in your command point. If you can even extend your command point, get even more units than you are allowed to. Kill up over time at the well. And the reason you might be asking, okay, Shanks, why are you building only horses and Rohirrim archers? It's simple, because I personally like the mobile units a bit more. This way I can hit and run, I can be more mobile, I can actually go for the defense if I have to. In some bigger maps, which, will, which we will get to play very, very soon, we will get to play on maps for 4 players, 6 players, 7 players, even 8 players. And then the distance between the, the opponent base and our base is going to be huge. And you need to be mobile, you need to be moving around a bit faster. And with infantry units, especially like tower guards and soldiers and peasants, it's quite difficult. They are not weak, don't by all means, they are hitting like a truck, they are really strong and tanky. They might be even a better choice in, a, in some circumstances. Uh, but unless you get, uh, I mean, once you get the glorious charge on your Rohirrim, they are the best units in the game by far. The amount of leadership you are able to stack for the Rohirrim is kind of insane, if you ask me. 
Okay, you wanna fight? I'm down fighting. Come together, hunters. Okay, we are full on command points now. That means we are not able to recruit any more units, guys. And uh, this guy is actually rebuying and everything, you know? What's going on? Let's use fire and kill this. With fire, it's gonna be easy to kill this in a second and a half. We need to destroy the Uruk pits. He was also building towers. I'm actually curious if he was able to buy the outpost because on the bottom right side there is another outpost on this map west mnet okay riders of the mark, riders of the mark. i mean i'm really looking forward for the helm's deep mission and also for the minas Tirith mission so far i was having a lot of fun during the missions and campaigns in the shadow and flame mod i think they added some great uh, you know features new heroes new units are existing now in this game which is pretty dope so let's focus down the buildings, actually. I want to just kill the buildings now. Their command points kept. Can't get any more units anyway. Is this the special unit? Yeah, but actually, this special... I'm a bit disappointed from the special unit you are able to recruit with the Rohan faction. I'm curious about the special unit you will be able to recruit with the Gondor faction, though. We might be victorious now with 10 plus, 10,000 plus resources. All we need to do really is to kill this. Never shall they return. Never shall they return. And nope, we are not victorious just yet. So that means he has potentially this outpost or the outpost at the bottom left side. We will see. We will take a look into that. But first of all, let's capture this castle so he can't buy this one. We gotta use Cloud Break and write them down. Cloud Break is also reducing their armor and speed. So, with, you know, the thing is, Cloud Break only works on units when they are level 1. As long as you don't have Fear Resistance. Fear Resistance you get with level 2 already in this game. Or when there is a hero nearby, like Gandalf for example, and you get Fear Resistance from his leadership. Okay? So, that means, once the units are level 2, Cloud Break stun would be absolutely useless. That's why stunning all alone wouldn't be enough. That's why it's able to break, first of all, through rain and darkness and reduces their armor and speed even when they are not stunned. Because this can't be nullified, this can't be negated, you know? Okay. Man of the Riddermark. He actually gets so many done landings on the field. Go for a juicy trample. Spear throw, Eomea. Darkness. For death and glory, oh my goodness, this guy has actually so many units on the field. And they don't even die to the, to the single trample. Let's kill this building. With fire upgrades, it's easy. Let's switch formation to get a bit tankier. Let's go inside. Let's make wells here for the sustain. Even though we don't need it. You know what, it was kind of waste. We can always go to the outpost instead. I think that's a better choice. We also are able to get us another club, uh, another u unit. Where are these units coming from? Actually, confused. Let's destroy this. Okay, you guys can help. You can also put this archers normal normally inside the jeans, but I think that's not possible in the mission. We are command points kept. And now I believe we will be able to extend our command points. Yeah, we are definitely able to extend our command points. Do you see that? The reason was because some units were not able... Uh, we, some units got killed, but not the entire battalion. And as long as you can, as you can, uh, as long as you can save one single unit from a battalion, you will be good to go. You know what? We're gonna check this area with the archers. Stop being on vacation. And uh, we also can join them with the second army. You got. Oh, what am I doing? Okay, so let's group all together. Oh yeah, he has even an outpost here at the bottom right side. Mini outpost. Now, without fire, that's gonna take ages to destroy. Actually, we need to destroy this outpost first. The, the Yeoman archers can't handle that alone. It's not possible. Okay, so let's kill everything around this side. We also need to destroy this outpost and potentially even the outpost at the bottom left side. Actually, this took a bit longer time than I was expecting it to take. This Isengard is spamming lots of units on us. Holy quackamole. 
Um, yeah, destroy this outpost. You guys can protect this one. I'm actually kind of sad if you are not able to put them inside the outpost, uh, inside the Zita, around the outpost, to have some sort of protection. Look how long it takes to destroy one single mill, even though they have the fletching arrows, um, which also costs you a lot of money. But it's just not effective enough against buildings, only against units. Haha, <laughs> we destroyed them. <laughs> so funny when this guy is screaming like that. Okay, go for the trample. There we go, finally. We destroyed this outpost, that's great. Money is not a problem. We can't recruit any more units. But what we can do instead is build those Rohan God Towers. Which is a brand new structure for the Rohan faction. Doesn't normally exist. I want to see Eomir from closer distance. Eomir is looking like that. Pretty nice if you ask me. Look at him. Good design, good design. Now we gotta wake, uh, work our way up to the top side. Um, you know what would be nice for Rohan? If you could, you know, also put some siege weapons on top of the wall, just like Gondor can with the trebuchets. Maybe you can put some ends or something. I don't know if this would be OP or not. Not sure, but it would be quite, kind of fun for extra defense. But you have this thing, the wall banner, which is something uh, unique only for the Rohan faction. Maybe we have a little bit too many Rohirrim arches now. Which is not bad against units, but it's kind of horrible against buildings. More Get units are coming arches. all the time. We have four power points collected. I mean, at this point, I'm gonna skip the Beacon of Gonzo because I believe that's not gonna be useful. Let's use Cloudbreak to stun them. This way our archers can deal with them, no problemo. Once again, they have leadership around the statue. They are dealing 100% more damage. And also leveling up twice as fast. Oh, he's using War Chant. Hey, hey. Let's use... Actually, they are dealing so much damage to us. What the heck? Okay, plus 5, plus 5 for each kill. Let's make triple well. Level 5 Eomir, that's good. They are losing so many units. Holy moly. I have Sauron to see what's what's going on. This guy is smart. Look how Rohir marches. They are not dealing as much damage as I need them to deal. I don't know if they have heavy armor. No, they don't have. But they are, ah, they are the special units from the from the faction. Okay, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Did we lose the special units? Yeah, we definitely lost the special units. So we are not special anymore, huh? I cannot believe that. That's unfortunate, man. Hmm. Ah, that, that actually is bad, man. Come on now. Let's kill this building with fire. Because this guy is spamming units all the time. Kill back, Rohir Marcha. Don't die. Okay, we saved him barely. Let's go to the well. Let's sustain. Actually, this was kind of tough, though. I mean, it's not hard or something, but it was just, uh, you know, in compared to normal BFME one, this is way, way harder. The amount of units this Isengard was spamming on us was kind of crazy. Okay. Luckily, he's not getting any Uruk uh, pikemen, but the nerfs to the Rohirrim and the fact that they are not enough now to... Oh, hold on a second, I want to see this. Let's use this. Oh, look, it's like he has like a fire sword now. Do you see that animation, guys? Looks pretty nice. They've also level 5 Rohirrim. Riders of the Mark. He's not dealing that much damage to the buildings, which is okay. And that's the last remaining outpost, ladies and gentlemen, from the Isengard. And he keeps rebuilding stuff all the time. He keeps getting more and more units on the field all the time. You, you guys need to peel back. They are damaged. You guys can keep fighting. The crossbowmen are no problemo. Yomir is slowly but surely taking down this building. Okay, we can also use heal now. There we go. Use fire. To deal a bit faster damage to the build. Oh my goodness, the burst damage with fire is kind of crazy though. But you need, to be a, you need to be wise about your choice. Brave warriors have slain the forces of evil.
GG well played, we are victorious guys, very very soon, and trust me, it's gonna be sooner than you might think, we will be able to defend Helms deep, but for now we gain 20 more command points and 10% more resources, uh, looks like we will keep fighting with Eomir's army. I think we are going to attack um, Westfold, so the Theoden can't complain about uh, Westfold anymore, because Westfold is not gonna fall tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. Check me out on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. All the links you're gonna need. And also my Instagram, by the way. It's kind of unfortunate, but we have only 56 followers right now on Instagram. So if you want to see more photos of me about what, yeah, what we are doing and also about meme photos for the Lord of the Rings, you should be definitely checking me out on my Instagram too, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Until then, take care of yourselves. And as always, keep hitting like a truck and also stay beyond standards. Peace out. Yeah. <sighs>